I've just created and released a special Eclipse 2024 video outlining everything coming up with these two eclipses. The video shows the double yod chart from Friday, March 22nd. It talks about the potential conflict setting up in the Middle East. It shows the charts from the October eclipses so we can review where we're coming from and obviously shows the lunar eclipse of March 25th and the full solar eclipse of April 8th. There is so much conflict and tension baked into these eclipses, and yet so much possibility to create, especially around spirituality. So to help support the podcast and to grab your video to watch now, go to funastrology.com. The links are showcased at the top. Welcome in to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller and Robert Glasscock back. And you know, Robert, we love to take listener questions. And I've got a good one queued up, especially for when we're recording this, which is in within hours of the March 25th lunar eclipse. Check this out. I had a question about being born around eclipses. I was apparently born within a week of a total solar eclipse back in 1979. Apparently, there's some significance to being born around eclipses. What does it mean to be in an eclipse window, being born in an eclipse window? Like, what are the dates, days around that? And also, what qualities does the person have if they're born around a solar or a lunar eclipse? Thank you so much. Love your show. Oh, thank you so much. Isn't that great, Robert, when we get those and if you'd like to leave a message for us like she did, you can do that right at funastrology.com at the top left. Funastrology.com, top left. There's an orange button. You can do that right there. Well, Robert, we have a big total solar eclipse coming up that you're going to be right in the smack middle of. And we are recording this almost on a lunar eclipse. So we have a lot to talk about here. Yes, we do. It's the only eclipse until... 2044, I believe, that is going to be visible in North, in the contiguous United States. So it's a very important one, and it occurs in the sign of Aries, of new beginnings. Now, obviously, she didn't give us what she was born under, but she was asking about the significance of being born during or around near an eclipse in general. So for these kids, I mean, we can think about right now, a lot of kids around the world will be born over the next two weeks. Well, you have two kinds of eclipses. You have the solar eclipses, and those can be total or partial. And you have lunar eclipses. And solar eclipses are, in the essence, a new moon. The sun and the moon are conjunct. During a solar eclipse, the moon comes between the Earth and the sun, and in certain parts of the world along the eclipse path of a solar eclipse, the moon's disk is exactly the same as the solar disk. So the moon, the physical moon, obliterates the sun during a visible total solar eclipse. During a lunar eclipse, it's the Earth that comes between the, the, the lunar eclipses of the nature of a full moon, which is an opposition. Solar eclipses are of the nature of a conjunction between the sun and the moon. During a lunar eclipse, it's the Earth that gets between the light of the sun and the vis visible moon. So the moon is darkened during a lunar eclipse. The moon is darkened by the, the Earth's shadow getting between the light of the sun and, and the full moon. So there are those two kinds of eclipses, and everybody you read so much generalization about eclipses, most of which are, if you stop and think about them, worthless. Uh, somebody is going to have a dynamic life. What the heck does that mean? Everybody has a dynamic. So these kinds of generalities, to me, are a waste of time. If you just stop and think about what kind of eclipse is it, we've got this solar eclipse, this total solar eclipse coming up on April the 8th. Well, it's of a new moon nature. The, the moon gets between the earth and the sun. The sun is the soul, if you will, the mission, your mission in life. The moon is your 
emotional nature. It's your heredity, your family, particularly the mother, but it's emotions. And the sun is illumination. So during a solar eclipse, feelings get in the way of illumination. They take over the soul, in other words. So ancestry, where you were born, to whom you were born, what kinds of parents and parental situation you were born into, habits, the unconscious, emotional, irrational reality, supersedes wisdom and supersedes the soul, in a sense, so that people born under a solar eclipse do have a challenge. Now, it's a it's a new moon aspect. So it's a conjunction between the sun and the moon, technically. But the challenge for people born under a solar eclipse is to see past and through their familial and ancestral conditioning, their habits, what they're born into, the circumstances that they're born into, to see beyond that to their mission in life, their souls. This eclipse coming up April the 8th is in the sign of Aries, for example, which is the self. So a baby born under the direct path of this eclipse, their challenge will be can they integrate their ancestral or familial patterns and conditioning to find their true mission in life? So if you can just think your way through what the astronomical facts of these eclipses are under a full moon, a lunar eclipse, it's the other way around. Think about what's going on. The sun and the moon are opposite each other. The Earth's shadow it falls onto the moon, and the earth is physicality and materiality. So during a lunar eclipse, the sun and the moon are opposite each other, and materiality, the earth, gets in between them so that a person born under a full moon, now I was, I was not born during an eclipse, but I am born at a full moon, the implication is that people born under a full moon, the parents at birth were either separated, geographically separated, or psychologically and emotionally separated. Mine happened to be. My father was going down on a ship in the English Channel in World War II when I was born. So he was halfway around the world. I didn't meet him for nine months. So they were literally separated, but it can also be a physical, a, a psychological separation. The parents may be at odds with each other for a full moon or a, a lunar eclipse. So you're dealing here with the light of consciousness, which is the sun, and the emotional and hereditary, inherited, habitual, unconscious feeling nature of the moon. And this eclipse that we're having in April on the 8th, is of the nature of a new moon. And it occurs in Aries, and not only in Aries, we know the degree of Aries that it occurs in. So the sub-rulership of this Aries, and this eclipse, whether you're born under it or you just experience it for everybody in the world, it indicates basically around the time of the eclipse, major new beginnings in the life. It's in Aries. So something is dying and something is simultaneously being reborn, a new sense of purpose, a new sense of direction. And this is something that comes inspirationally. It's in a fire sign, which if you go into Jungian analytical psychology is uh, the intuitive function. Analytical psychology has four functions, the intuitive, the feeling, the sensational, and the intellectual, and so on. So this one is happening in the intuitive faculty. But everybody, to whatever degree, under this April the 8th solar eclipse, is beginning some new mission in their lives. And secondarily, you can get to the degree of it. It's at 18 or 19 degrees Aries. Well, that particular sector of the zodiac 
is subruled by the Leo Decanate of Aries and the Scorpio Duad of Aries. So you can look at those subrulerships as well and think about what they mean. And secondarily, you want to look at what house in the solar eclipse chart, what house in your natal chart does that solar eclipse fall at roughly 19 Aries? Or during a lunar eclipse, what houses, what pair of houses does the eclipse occur in? Because it will affect those houses in particular. In my case, for example, the solar eclipse falls in my fourth house of the home and family and, and of, of course, new starts, new beginnings. So you want to think about that. This solar eclipse is a conjunction. It's at 19 Aries. And that will fall in a particular house in your own horoscope that you should pay attention to as far as consciously making something conscious in terms of a new start, a new beginning that has great significance, really, because eclipses are emphatic. They're not just a regular conjunction. And for an eclipse to occur, the sun and the moon have to be in conjunction with the moon's nodes either conjunct or opposite, one or the other of the nodes, so that this is what makes eclipses so powerful. When you bring in the nodes, because the the nodes are basically the declination of of the moon, for example, and when the sun and the moon are in the same or or opposite uh, declinations, they, they will fall in conjunction or opposition to these nodes, and the nodes are always in astrology considered to be karmic. In other words, past lives, absolutely, or heredited, hereditary qualities, depending on the sign. So this one coming up is in the sign of Aries. And that in Aries is all about initiation and self-realization. And this can look like a very selfish thing to be starting in your own life. It may or may not be selfish, but it is important for the self to express. And something new is in everybody's consciousness around the world, really. But especially people who are Aries, Libra, Capricorn, or Cancer, it's cardinal signs. And they will very directly be making a significant new start beginning around this April 8th eclipse. So be aware of that. Be aware of what house it falls in. Mine is in the fourth. So, but especially in the fourth, it's a beginning of a new foundation for me or for anybody who has Aries in the four on the fourth cusp. So you have to consider all those different factors when you're, you're talking about this. And I hope this at least begins to help anybody literally think through what kind of eclipse is this astronomically? What is it? And that will help you cut through the gobbledygook that you read that's general and kind of worthless to me. So, And yes, people born under eclipses do tend to be dynamic. For example, a solar opposition of solar eclipse at birth presupposes that an individual born under that has two choices. They can either conform to what their family and ancestral and local and community expectations are for them in terms of how to live a life, what to do in life, and so on. Or they can realize that their aims in life are completely different from their parents' aims for them, from their community's expectations of them. And full moon babies like I am or babies born under a lunar eclipse will tend to leave their families and go their own way in life. And again, that can look selfish, especially to the parents who want that child to do what they want them to do. It can look very selfish. But if you're an Aries moon like I am, uh, it becomes the, the crux of your life is to find yourself and follow your bliss, whether that conforms to your family expectations or not. So there's some inherent conflict built into lunar eclipses that are not there under a solar eclipse. A solar eclipse is a conjunction with the sun and the moon. So the real goal is to try and unite the feeling nature with the soul nature. 
And so these babies, solar eclipse babies, can in fact ultimately be significant leaders in their communities. And they tend to have strong personalities for good or ill. But the key with the solar eclipse is to realize that your emotions by nature will overrule your soul if you're not careful. So people born with a solar eclipse in their chart will tend to have very strong family conditioning. They may fit in very well with their family condition, depending on the aspects from the other planets to the solar eclipse. Or they may not, if the solar eclipse squares things like Mars or squares Venus, for example, or squares the ascent to descent to axis, then that person's mission in life, it gives you a chance, this solar eclipse, to unite the feeling nature with the will or with illumination or the soul, the sun and the moon are conjunct. So following that united path may be easy, relatively easy for you. Or if it's in conflict with some of the other houses and planets, it may be very difficult and may, is, is in my case, I um, moved as far away from my family as I could, as soon as I could, which was 2021, to find myself and to live my own life. But it's a very powerful indication. And this one coming up in April is absolutely for everybody, no matter what you've been through for the last 30 years, if you're that old. Uh, for a new start to make. And everybody is already feeling this eclipse. You just left your home of many years in North Carolina to move west, for example, and make a, a new start. So it's not, this move didn't happen exactly under this eclipse, but it certainly did happen around the time of this eclipse. So now you're in a whole new environment in a new region of the country, and you are also undergoing what I'm talking about here. Is this? I hope this makes sense for the listener. Yeah, I think uh, great explanation. And that house where it is for me is the 10th house, which uh, 19 degrees Aries falls right there in the basically middle of the 10th house. Go figure, right? <laughs> and, well, I, that's interesting since it is a complete change in your career. And I happen to know that you've shared with me what's going on with uh, with your all aspects of your career, which are very exciting, and they're all about new starts, literally moving and starting anew, but also the projects that you have going along with me and some other people in your life. Yeah, Fascinating. I, well, and I didn't even know where the moving boxes were, much less be out of them. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, I get this text about the possibility of doing a radio show out here. So it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, and 10 miles from the Jupiter line. I mean, come on. So this is interesting. OK, here's the big glaring question for me. And I imagine some others are thinking this same thing. Is the eclipse, now you mentioned the distinction being that it always is near a conjunction with the nodes. So it's always close to the nodes, the sun and the moon, sun and or the moon, right? But here's the question is, truly now, seriously, is an eclipse, which is a wonderful phenomenon of nature, but is it really that much more so strong than being born under any other new or full moon? Yes, it is, if you are born near the eclipse path, particularly, because along that path, in a solar eclipse, the moon's disk obliterates the sun. And so it can be a unification between the, the feeling, the emotional nature, and the hereditary nature, and the soul, or the will. But it can also, depending on the sign it's in, such as this one coming up in Aries, Aries is about you. It's about nobody else. It's about you. And the challenge for every Aries, whether they're born under an eclipse or not, just by sun sign, the challenge of being an Aries, that's sun or moon, is will you follow your own star, follow your own bliss, or will you conform to your parents' expectations. Now, if you're born into a really difficult parental situation, if you're born to abusive parents, or parents who are impoverished, or parents who are divorcing, 
or parents who are ill with serious illnesses and so on. That can become difficult because to be yourself and follow your own star may be sacrificed to the parental background and so on. If you have a family that has no money and you can't afford an education, that could stymie you. On the other hand, if you, even in such situations, are determined to get an education, you will go the extra mile to find scholarships or assistance or loans or anything, anything to get educated in what you want to be educated in. And sometimes that can be self-education. But so it's a real challenge, these eclipses, especially if you're born directly under the path. Well, you know, let me let you, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And let's play off of this and bring it right into reading a chart. We'll drop this chart in the show notes so you can see it for yourself. We're going to look at the March 25th, 2024 lunar eclipse. And one of the things, Robert, that stood out to me in this is there's a great big yod in this chart. And you'll see it when you call it up. Call it up from the show notes. The south node is sitting at the top. And on my chart, I have that little A that's sitting next to the south node. That's Urania. It just kind of astrologers are playing with. Maybe that's where astrology is. Don't worry about that. The moon is 10 degrees away, also in Libra there, as we've been talking about. And the... Uh, um, Yod base over there has Saturn and Venus on one side, Jupiter and Uranus on the other. I just thought, wow. So there's a fated Yod sitting in the middle of this lunar eclipse chart. I like this, this Yod. And I like Yods in general, or Yods, whichever you prefer. And what a Yod is, again, think through these things. Certainly you could find this in books, but if you just take a moment to think. You've got a sextile, in this case, a sextile between the Saturn-Venus conjunction, which is fated love or deep love. In a collective sign of Pisces, it's universal love. That's Saturn and Venus's conjunction, which sextiles the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction happening in the sky right now and going to be exact in April. Jupiter Uranus, if you think about it, that and it's in the sign of Taurus, the most materialistic physical sign that there is. So it certainly involves things like money and materiality, but it involves the Earth itself, the planet. So Jupiter is of the nature of expansion and wisdom and growth, can join Uranus of breakthroughs. This Jupiter Uranus conjunction is a breakthrough. That conjunction happens to sextile the Saturn-Venus conjunction. Meanwhile, you have the nodes, the south node, exactly opposite the midpoint between the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction and the Saturn-Venus conjunction. And the, the nodes are, now the, the north node is also at the midpoint. But to form that yod, you have to have a planet or point opposite the midpoint of the sextile, and that's what we have. And the nodes are karmic. They are universal. They are worldwide, and they're global. So that this lunar eclipse, to me, predicts a period of hope, hopeful understanding and a breakthrough in universality. And this can involve pretty much everything going on now. But this eclipse presupposes an awakening of sorts. And it may be an awakening through a conscious realization of how bad things are. But you know the phrase, it's always darkest before the dawn. And that's what this yod is about. Wow, I'm glad, I'm glad you brought the positive side up on this because I've been seeing the shadow side of these and, of course, have felt the shadow side, and I'm hearing other people the shadow side. So that's great. Darkest before the dawn, and we will look for the positive. Robert, thank you so much for walking us all the way through this. Really appreciate it. If you guys would like to find out all the information of everything we have going on in the podcast, go to the show notes, and that's where Robert's link is for readings as well. 
Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time with another listener question on the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock.